Okay folks, welcome back. We are going to look and just remind you about words that we've used in the function chapter of the book. And that's the word bijection, uh, injective, surjective. Okay, so if you want to go through it in the book and look at the definitions that we used in the book, just to make sure there's lovely pictures of it in there as well, so that you can make sure that you understand the language we're going to use in graph theory, because this is where it comes into play. So what is a bijection? Well, in mathematics, a bijection, or a bijective function, is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So it's an invertible function. For a function to have an inverse in maths, it has to be a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Each element of one set is paired with exactly one element in the other set. That makes a bijection. And each element of the other set is paired also with exactly each element in the first set. There is no unpaired elements for something to be a bijection in that particular picture. In mathematical terms, a bijective function is a rule f that map maps x onto y over there. Okay, is a one-to-one, -one, in other words, an injective, and an onto, in other words, a surjective mapping of sets x to set y. The term one-to-one -one correspondence, folks, very important, must not be confused with one-to-one -one function, in other words, an injective function. Okay, now here's the figures, just to remind you. The first figure, first figure takes three elements in the domain and maps it uniquely onto three of the four elements in the codomain. So this is an injective function, but it's not surjective. Now let's see what a surjective function is. Why is it not surjective? It's not including every element then in the codomain. Okay, so it's not a bijection. This is a bijection. Every element in the domain, you can see where I got this from there, you can go to Wikipedia and look at these, are mapped onto an element in the codomain. Okay? So that is an injective surjective function. In other words, it's a bijection. It's both. Bi means two. Not injective over here. Why is it not injective? Because there's two elements in the domain that maps onto the codomain. Okay? This is a surjection, but it's not a bijection, because it's not injective. Now here we have four elements in the codomain. So this is not one of the two. It's not an injective function, nor is it a surjective function. So it can't be called a bijection. Okay, so please make sure that you know what those terms refer to. So let's return to the book and let's have a look at what it says. Let me just get rid of that. Here we have the definition for isomorphic graphs. An isomorphism between two graphs, G1 and G2, is a bijection. So in other words, it's a one-to-one -one mapping. Each element in the domain maps onto an element in the codomain. Okay? Represented by the rule F, which maps the vertex set 1 onto the vertex set 2 between the vertices of the graphs, such that if AB is an edge of G1, then F of A and F of B is an edge of G2. Okay, very important. We're going to look at a more detailed definition after we've looked at this definition. And we're going to work with this idea um, in a few examples. So, two graphs are called isomorphic if there's an isomorphism between them. And in this case we write G1 is isomorphic to G2, meaning graph 1 and graph 2 are isomorphic graphs. Okay, an isomorphism is simply a function which renames the vertices. It must be a bijection, so every vertex gets a name. These newly named vertices must be collected by edges precisely 
if they were connected um, by edges with their old names. Important, very important thing. So I'm going to bring in an alternative definition at this point. Okay, folks, here is our alternative definition for an isomorphism. Okay, between two graphs. So we're going to say let G1, graph 1, be defined by the vertex set 1 and the edge set 1. And we're going to define G2 by calling it vertex set 2 and edge set 2. So these two are two graphs with separate vertex, vertex sets. Let me just use my other pen. So we say that G1 is isomorphic to G2. Okay, we read this. G1 isomorphic to G2. If and only if. Okay, now you'll see we're using a lot of discrete mathematical language. If and only if. There exists a rule F which maps vertex set 1 onto vertex set 2, okay, where the following two conditions have been met. Condition 1 is F is bijective. So in other words, it's a unique mapping. The rule creates a unique mapping. And secondly, for all vertices A and B, which belongs to vertex set 1, AB, the set AB belongs or is an element of edge set 1. Okay? Then, if and only if, this will be the case, if and only if, f of a and f of b is an edge uh, in graph number 2. So it belongs to the edge set 2. So let's just read through this and try and make sense of what it's saying. It says, for two graphs g1, g2 to be isomorphic, they will be isomorphic if and only if the rule F, which creates a mapping of rule 1 onto rule 2, exists, where F is bijective, and for every vertex set in, uh, or vertex that's an element of the vertex set A, uh, uh, vertex set 1, AB is an edge in vertex set 1, or edge set 1. Now this, if and only if, those mappings forms edges that belong in edge set 2. Okay, now it's a very technical language here. But I think we need to get to that rule. Now let's just analyze this. What does this F mean? It means the nodes, in other words, here, I'm going to write here, the nodes or the ver oopsie, the nodes or the vertices in graph 1 match with those in graph 2 so it's an on to mapping the nodes or vertices another word for nodes or vertices in graph 1 match those um, vertices that are in graph 2 and we call that an on to mapping so that's the first thing we're going to look at then the notion that it's bijective all the nodes so all nodes or all vertices or nodes that's what bijection will mean all those vertices have a corresponding
node or vertex in the second graph. So that works both ways. So all the vertices V1 must have a vertex V2 in the second graph or the other way around. Okay. Now, our condition here is if there is an edge in the first graph, that edge has to be in the second graph as well. That's basically what the second condition means. So if there is an edge in the first graph, that edge can be mapped onto an edge in the second graph. That edge, therefore, is also in the second graph. Okay, so in plain English, that is what our definition, and I would r much rather prefer you use this definition, because you're going to prove that graphs are isomorphisms by proving that these two conditions do exist in the graph. So let's look at examples of this. Example 1. Okay, I've got graph 1. Now let me draw graph 1 um, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so let's join those. And let's join the third one. So A, B, C, and D. We're going to call this edge 1. Let me use another color. Edge 1. We're going to call this edge 2, edge 3, and edge 4. And what are we doing? Well, in graph 2, we're going to look for mappings. Are those things the same in the two. Now the second graph we're going to draw a little bit differently. It looks different. Okay, so we've got the three vertices. Make your vertices always very clear. So this is vertex X, this is vertex Y, this is vertex Z, that's vertex W. Okay, so the question is, is this isomorphic or not? Okay, so let's have a look. Let's look at the first um, condition, for condition 1. We're now trying to see, are these two graphs isomorphic, or are they not isomorphic? Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to see that F is bijective. The vertices map onto one another. Okay, so if I look at the mapping of vertex A, Vertex A has three edges that goes into it. The only vertex in graph 2 that that happens to is vertex X. So there's definitely a mapping there. Let's look at B. Vertex B has two vertices or two edges running in or out depending on how you look at it. Now, in the other graph, there's two of those that that happens to. There's Y and there's Z. So we can choose any one of the two. So let's say this one maps onto Y. We go to verte or to the mapping of vertex C. Okay, remember, what does F do? It maps the vertices in one onto the vertices in two. So we're looking at the structure of the two graphs. Will it be the same? So FC then will map onto Z over here. Because C has two edges, Z has two edges. Okay, so let's have a look then at the last one. What happens with vertex D in graph 1? Well, D has one edge coming into it. Later on, we're going to refer to that as the degree of the vertex, or the degree of the node, or the valence of the node. But that's still coming, that language. Okay, so there's one edge going into it. So D definitely just maps onto W. So did we pass the first 
condition? Definitely we did. Okay, so let us look at the second condition, which says for every edge in element 1, there must be a mapped edge in uh, in edge set 1 rather, there should be a mapped uh, uh, edge in edge set 2. Okay, so let's have a look. AB, now remember AB, what are we going to say? If we start off, let's just start off with AD. So we're looking at the second condition over here. Let's start with AB. AB, we've got to look at BC. Okay, we've got to look at AB, we've got to look at BC, we've got to look at AC, and then we've got to look at AA, a, sorry, that's AD. So AB here connects a vertex set with three, a vertex with three edges, to a vertex with two edges. So all the A's can be replaced by X's. Now let's see if that's going to work. So that's an X. There's another A. So that's an X. All the B's can be replaced by Y's. So that's a Y. This is a Y. And here we have another A, which is an X. Okay, so the C's can be replaced by Z. That C is replaced by Z. And then the D is replaced by a W. Now let's see if that's the case. A, B and X, Y. There's A, B, 3, 2. There's X, Y, 3, 2. Okay, that works. So the first one definitely maps uniquely. B, C from 2 to 2 maps on Y, Z, 2 to 2. So that definitely works. A, C goes 2 to 3 goes x, z, x, z, over here, okay, so a, c, x, z, a is 3, c is 2, x is 3, z is 2, so that's a beautiful mapping, and then a, d goes 3 to 1, what does x, w do, x, w goes 3 to 1, so indeed, it's a perfect mapping through that rule. So therefore, we can conclude that G1 is indeed isomorphic to G2. Quite a nice one. A nice example to explain our definition with. So folks, please, I hope that that helps you to see that something as complicated as what we've got over there is really not complicated if you break it down and you take it into a graph and you see how that translates into something that is called a graph. Okay folks, here's our first example from the book again. It gives us two graphs, G1 and G2. The vertex set for graph 1 is ABCD. The vertex set for graph 2 is ABCD. Okay. The edge set is AB, AC, AD, and BC. And the edge set for 2 is AB, AC, BC, and CD. Now, it asks us, are these graphs equal or also isomorphic? Okay, so we've got to look at that. Now, if we just look at the way the graphs have been defined, we can see that the edge sets are different where my finger is over there. There's an AD and a BC. All the others appear to be the same. So let's see how we're going to show whether this is isomorphic or not. Now remember our definition that we worked with is, where's our definition? There it is. Okay. So we're going to, let me just get rid of this. We are going to work with that definition and see whether it applies to those two graphs that we've got. Okay, let's read. It says the graphs are not equal. Exactly why is because of what we saw there. AD is an edge in graph 
Z1, edge Z1, but AD is not an edge in edge Z2. BC is an edge. Okay? So both graphs, though, contain the same number of vertices and the same number of edges. Okay? There's four edges, four vertices. So there might still be a possibility of them being isomorphic. We don't know. This is not enough in most cases, but yeah, it's a good start to look at this, he says. So let's try and build an isomorphism. Okay, now we're going to use the rule F, which maps vertex set 1 onto vertex set 2. So F of A, A is mapped onto B. We're going to say B is mapped onto C. C is mapped onto D, and then D is mapped onto vertex A. Now, folks, I'm sure you can see that that is definitely a bijection. That's a one-to-one -one mapping. There's one line that leaves all the vertices at the top, and there's one coming into all the vertices at the bottom. Okay, so this is a bijection. But to make sure that the function is an isomorphism, we must now look at the edges. Okay? in respect to the relation of the edges. Now remember, again, that is the second part of our definition. So we've done the mapping. They map onto each other here. We don't have the graphs, but we've done that mapping. Now by that mapping, we're looking, does this exist such that it satisfies these two? It satisfied the first. So let's start looking at the second. Well, in G1, graph 1, vertices A and B are connected there by an edge. In graph 2, is B and C connected? Let's see. Yes, it is definitely connected. So, so far, our rule works. This part here. Okay, because why? AB is connected in 1, and that corresponds to BC in 2 which means definitely connected. So far, so good. But we must check all the other edges as well. So the edge AC in graph 1, AC should form BD in graph set 2, which you can see clearly it doesn't. Okay, so there's a problem. BD is not in the edge set of the second graph. So these two are not isomorphisms of one another mm, under that rule the way we've defined the mapping here okay so could we define a different rule so that they do form an isomorphism okay so let's have a look if we look at the two graphs yeah in the bottom graph one and graph two okay Vertex A here corresponds to vertex C. Vertex B corresponds to D. Vertex D corresponds to either B or A. And vertex C corresponds to either B or A. We can really pretty much choose what we want to be there. What we want uh, to map onto one another. Okay, so we've seen so far that we've drawn these two graphs um, that we have over there and we are now going to see can we create another rule G that causes an that, that confirms an isomorphism okay folks so I've redrawn that graphs and we're gonna see how we can define those mappings now remember where's my definition there's our definition we are going to in going in search of a rule F that maps the vertices in 1 onto the vertices in 2. If there is such a rule that exists, then it's, it should be a bijective rule. And then the edges should also map onto one another. So let's have a look. Is there an isomorphism? So for the first one, we're going to say, we're going to define this as rule G. So G of vertex A. 
Vertex A has three edges. The only one on the other side that has that is C. So we're going to call it C. It maps onto C. G of B. Is there a vertex here with one edge? Definitely it's D. Then we go to G of C. Two edges. Well, there's B or there's A. We can go for any one of the two. So let's go for vertex G of C here. And let's call that A. Okay, we call, could have called it B. It doesn't matter. As long as the number of edges it goes into it maps. And then the last one is G of D. Okay, so D will then map which one did we not use onto B. Okay, so there's a good mapping in terms of the bijective, um, the vertices itself. So definitely that rule is bijective. It maps one onto one in the second graph. Now for the edge sets. Well, we've got set A. Let's start with AB. Then let's go to AD. Let's go to DC. And then finally AC at the end. Now we've already shown this mapping. So all the A's can be replaced by C's. There we go. All the B's can be replaced by D's. There's a D. Okay, that's the only one. All the C's can be replaced by A's. So there's an A here. And there's another C. So there's an A over there. And all the D's can be replaced by B's. So that's B, C. Um, all the D's become B's. So that's A, B and A, C. Now let's see if this is indeed a true mapping that does stick to what we're looking for over here. So is there an edge in the first graph that is also an edge in the second graph? Does this map perfectly onto that? Okay, let's have a look. Where's AB? AB goes from 3 to 1. CD goes from 3 to 1. So that works perfectly. AD. AD goes from 3 to 2. CB. CB goes from 3 to 2, so unique. DC, DC goes from 2 to 2, and so does AB go from 2 to 2. Perfect. And then AC goes from 3 to 2, while CA goes from 3 to 2. So definitely it behaves in the way the definition says it should. Okay, so here these graphs are isomorphic under our mapping rule that we created G. Now remember it, it, it's, all, it's based on exactly the previous example. It's the same example in your book folks. But in the first one, we chose a different mapping over here. We chose a different rules for the game. Okay, and we saw, but hang on, under that mapping, there is no isomorphism there. So we looked at a different mapping. So what I'm trying to say to you here, and what this example shows beautifully, is for you to be able to work with this very economically. Look at the definition. Draw the graph. Take the information that they've given you about the graph, draw the two graphs, and from that create your rule. Is there a rule that exists that maps a three um, valenced vertex with another three valenced vertex over here in the second graph? And you do the same for the others, and then you see do the edges indeed map as well. Okay, so that is our first discussion on isomorphism. Um, in the third video, we'll continue discussing our graph theory. Remember to like the video and to subscribe to my channel.